Hello everyone. This video is part of a series where we are implementing a microservices based social media application and we have as a main goal learning the microservices pattern. We also want to explore some of the main challenges and some of the possible solutions and best practices in the world of microservices. This is a quick overview of the tasks we are working on currently and our plan for the near future. And in the second screen, I have a little bit more detailed or I have done a better outline of the tasks we plan to implement over the upcoming videos. You can pause the video and have a look if you're interested in. And we also have a Jira board where we will be tracking the progress of every user story as well as their subtasks. So in the previous video, we did some refactoring within our types for our node mailer email API. And we have defined that instead of using two different interfaces and specifying which protected methods should be implemented by our classes, we have decided to go with a simple, unique or uh, centralized, let's call it like this, email API interface, which is then shared by our email sender and by our node mailer email API, right? So now the email sender is going to have the sole responsibility of being populated with an email API and acting as a proxy to the external world so that we can call a method from the email sender and the email sender will call the respective method from the email API. So this allows us to set the email API as we want and also to change it during the execution of the, of the project if we want to do so. And this is also an important setup to allow for unit tests because it enables us to populate the email sender with a mock email API, right? So we have here, for example, the mock email API, which simply implements the email API. So what I had planned for this video is to come back to this node mailer email API class, because of course, this is not a good practice, right? We definitely don't want to code the specific transport within our constructor because it may be the case that we want to still use node mailer but to pass a different SMTP server. So here we wouldn't use the same configuration. Of course, this is a local host configuration, which means that this will be working as long as we initialize this SMTP server in our local machine, but that's for sure not the case for production. Right? So for production, we would do something that's much more scalable and much safer in the sense that we would substitute, for example, the user and the pass with our process or with our environment variables so that we can code this or we don't need to commit this information to our repository. And then we can use secrets, for example, in Kubernetes to set this authentication information and keep it hidden from the external from, from, from the external world. What we are going to do today is we will create a SMTP server config interface and we will then create a node mailer app SMTP server class, which will then implement this SMTP server config interface. And this is nothing more than moving this code to a specific class, right? So we already have this principle here with the email sender, we can pass whatever email API we want to as long as it implements the email API interface. And we want to achieve the same when it comes to the SMTP server. So we want the node mailer email API to be populated with whatever SMTP server we want as long as it follows the SMTP server config interface so that the node mailer email API doesn't need to know anything about the specific details or which specific SMTP server configuration it will be working with. This is not the responsibility of the node mailer email API. So let's go to our types file that's in the folder utils, email sender, and then types, and we will export again another interface. And this interface is going to be SMTP server config. And it will have a single method, which is called get config, right? And this get config is not going to receive any arguments and it's going to return a SMTP server config. And this not very good <laughs> naming 
um, maybe we implement the interface like this as MTP server and then the get config method is going to return a as MTP server config and here we'll declare the type at the bottom right so as MTP server config is going to be of the type that we are using here at our node mail or email API so I will simply copy this of course this is not a valid type right so I want the host to be a string I want my port to be a number so basically I'm just substituting the exact or the specific values with their types because of course not every host is going to be called localhost and not every port is going to be 1025 so I need to receive a string from our localhost I need to receive a number as our port and the authentication I will extract this to its own type again and I will call it smtp server config auth and this is going to be nothing more than user and pass right like this and the user is a string and the pass is also string okay and the off here is going to be of type as mtp server config off like so Oops. okay now we have a type that we can use as the return type of the get config method of our smtp server interface now we will come to our email sender uh, folder and we will implement or we will create a new file and this new file is going to be our node mailer app smtp server.ts the only thing that this smtp server is going to do is it's going to export as a default or maybe it doesn't need to be a default well we'll leave it as a default it doesn't really matter class node mailer app smtp server implements smtp server interface right like so and here i need to get a method get config which returns a smtp server config i can also import this and the only thing that the external world needs to know is that this node mailer app smtp server has a get config method the external world doesn't need to know how we store the information inside of our node mailer app SMTP server class. So we will store this as private variables. We need the host. I will just declare all of them here and then we will code the exact values. We need to have a port. We need to have a user. And we need to have a pass. And for the host, we are going to get the value of localhost as we had before. I think that these values are still here exactly. So I'll just copy and paste them here. Just let me, oops, paste them here and I will copy and paste. So the port is going to be 1025. The user is going to be project one. And the password is going to be secret one. And now I can delete this and I export my class. And then as a result of my get config method, I will return the host, which is going to be this.host. I'll return the port, which is going to be this.port. I'll return off, which is then going to have a user, which is going to be this.user, and a pass, which is going to be this.pass. And like so, I can implement now i can use this node mailer app as mtp server within my node mailer email api in order to get my transport configuration whenever i am starting node mailer so instead of writing down this whole thing here let's create a new instance of our node mailer app as mtp server and we'll say get config and that's all we need in order to configure our transporter this is still not the final version because this class is really remember that we talked a few videos ago the principle or the open close principle right so this class here is not really open for extension it's really open for changes which is not what we want right we want a class 
open for extension and closed for changes. And why is this closed for extension and open for changes, which is the opposite of what we want, is because of this new class here that we are declaring, right? So the idea is that if I need to change my SMTP server, I need to come here in this class and I need to explicitly delete this and write some other SMTP server dot get config, right? So this class is not in its ideal design yet, but we now have another place where we are creating the node mailer SMTP or the node mailer app SMTP server. And as you may start guessing, this is going to be in the future moved outside of this class and we will then generate the correct SMTP server following some strict rules or following some processes about um, that, that we will discuss in the beginning of, of the next video. So I want to make a brief discussion about the factory pattern, which is what we are going to use here. And then we will have a much cleaner implementation of this interface. But for the moment, we can even leave these things here coded, right? So the, the project one user and the secret one password. And let's make a little test. So remember that we have this node mailer app in our computer, in our local machine, and I can start the server. Now, if I go to local server, then we should see that the server is currently running. Now, if I come here back to my index file, I have a node mailer email API. And now I know that in the node mailer email API, it has the transport, which is the node mailer app as MTP server. So if I come here after my application starts listening on port 3000, I can simply say const res is equal to email sender dot send sign up verification email and the to email is going to be test at test.com. And then I will console.log my response. Right, so now here, if I were to npm run start dev, then I should be able to see my response because everything should be working as expected, except that I forgot the await here. <laughs> so give me a couple of seconds to adjust this. And now I think that we should get the response. Exactly. So we get the to email and the status of success. And this is just because this is the object that we are returning from our send sign up verification email, right? But as you may imagine, or as you may remember, this should not only print something on the console, but if I come here, then I should see that there is a new email and there are actually two new emails because we have sent it twice, right? Just we, we wrote down the promise here first and then we, after adding the await, we are actually printing the response, but we have two new emails that were just sent to our local inbox. Good. So this is what we wanted to do for this video. We now have a, an extensible or an interface that we can use to implement other SMTP servers if we want to. And in the next video, we will come back and we will use environment variables for our user and pass. We will also implement the factory pattern to not only extract this logic of initializing the node mailer app SMTP server outside of the node mailer email API, but also to enable us to create other SMTP servers as we want to. For example, in production, we don't want to use a local SMTP server. So we will also have the possibility of creating an actual SMTP server that is going to deliver emails to anyone's inboxes. If you don't want to miss out on the upcoming videos and you want to get a notification as soon as they're out, then just make sure to subscribe to the channel and you will get a little alert every time I publish a new video. I have a lot of ideas in my mind of playlists that I want to make. So I think you will also get a lot of benefit from following up the upcoming videos. Until the next video, thank you for your time and see you then. Bye bye.